Welcome to another unboxing. I'm Kelly Lorraine and I'm gonna open up and review whatever oracle cards, tarot cards are in this package. Now, I have no idea what's in this package. I'm still laughing at myself for my first unboxing video where unfortunately it was the wrong box. I opened up a box of supplements and not oracle cards. So this time I'm pretty positive that we're gonna have some oracle cards, so stay tuned. Now, before I get into this package, I have to ask you a question. What do you prefer most in a tarot card or oracle card deck? Is it the imagery or is it words that could be on the cards? Now, I say could or possibly because not all cards have words on them. Now, naturally, the tarot deck is going to follow suit with the fool's journey. Hence why you're going to have the fool, you're going to have the high priestess, you're going to have the chariot, the lovers, the star card, the world. That's pretty standard. But on an oracle deck, you could have any type of words written on those cards or not written on those cards. What is your preference? Now for me personally as a Virgo, when I'm reading Oracle cards, I really like seeing words written on the cards or small little explanations. And that's not because I can't interpret the imagery on the card, I can. The thing is, is that I like the way words play off the images. It allows me for a lot more conversation or topics to discuss. They're almost like prompts that can spark new energy or deep thoughts or deep conversations. So let me know in the comments what your preference is. Okay, so let's get into this. Let's see what is actually in this package. Now, I know it's not supplements. I can definitely feel that there are cards in here. So, wow, okay, I have two decks coming out here. This is called Ask Your Guides Oracle Cards by Sonia Shuckett. Love the colors on this box, very beautiful. And the other one here is the Green Witch Oracle. Now, totally different vibes here. Have a look. Let's do something kind of different. Let's pick a deck. Now. Pick the deck that you most resonate with, okay? Take a look at the colors, the vibe, pick one. And then we'll see if your vibes or maybe your thoughts coincide with mine. Okay, so a moment ago I told you that the Ask Your Guides deck is by Sonia Chaquette, but I forgot to mention that the Green Witch Oracle is by Sherilyn Darcy. So we have two very distinctly different decks here. One very neutral and another very bright and filled with chakra colors. So let's take a moment look at these boxes again and now let's get into it the first deck i want to look at is the ask your guides deck now this is a 56 card deck that says it's going to help you connect to your higher self angels spirit guides and helpers on the other side in the accompanying guidebook you'll find a thorough explanation of each card including key words that present concepts and energies to enhance the card's meaning and help you get as much information as possible okay well let's open it up and find out now, it, to me, it looks like your standard guidebook. Now, it depends on what you look for in a guidebook or what you think is thorough. Is one page enough or is two pages something you like? What length of explanation are you looking for? For me personally, I'm not a fan when it's like a very small paragraph. I like at least a page of information. So let's take a look. Now, before we do anything, let's do something kind of special. Let's put our energy into this guidebook. Think about it for a second. And I'm gonna open it up to a random page and just see what message we need to know right now. Are you ready? Okay, let's go. We opened it up to creativity. Love it. Now, this is card number 18. It says patience. Well, of course I opened up to this page. Trust the process, Kelly. Practice, reevaluation, and assessment. Okay, there's no way to avoid risk if you wish to live a creative life. Stop worrying about making right or wrong choices and view all choices as creative opportunities. This is no surprise to me today because in a reading that I did for YouTube earlier, I talked about being creative and doing passion projects. That's something I'm very passionate about. So no risk, no reward, be creative. So the length of each page varies. Now, when I opened it up to number 18, creativity, I noticed that it was one page and then a very small message over here that said, your helper guides message to you, go back to the drawing board. So there you go, there's an extra message for somebody. But other pages do have more information. I think it just really depends on the card. So, you know, I think you're gonna get about a page of information approximately for each card. Let's take a look at the deck itself. I love the color scheme on the back of these cards, especially the stars. Whenever I see stars, I feel connected. So this is already a great start. The first card of the deck is the prayer card. So to me, 
Prayer and setting intentions are very much the same thing. What intentions would you like to set? What are you praying for right now? So card number one, prayer. Look at the beautiful vibrant colors. If you're someone that connects to color, I think this deck will be for you. So as you can see, the following cards have themes on them, which I really like. I love having a key word or a phrase that helps me tell a story or prompts me to make connections to other things. Now this card here is the support card. So this is telling us we're divinely guided, we are supported. I definitely connect to this card quite a bit. What is it? Closure, exactly. We need to close out some cycles so that new things can come in and we are divinely guided and supported to do so. Let's take a look at a few more cards to see if the images resonate with you. I love the colors, like I said earlier, and I do notice that the words match the images. Right here, this says epiphany, and this feels like something is coming to light. There's definitely a vibe of solitude on this card, and this one here, truth, see? It's almost like we're opening the curtains, you know, or we're revealing something. In this case, it says the truth. So I do love the fact that it does seem to match, and that's very important to me, because I don't like cards that make me feel like I'm confused. The butterfly here is an automatic transformation change and there we go it says change on the card so i do like the fact that it feels very consistent what do you think we don't have time to go through every single card of this deck but so far i do really like it and i hope that you do too a burning question you might have is how do you clean or cleanse a new deck because ultimately you have to build a relationship with your own deck and i like to do that by putting my hands on the deck, putting my hand on each card, feeling the texture, looking at the images, even burning some sage while I'm doing this allows the smoke to connect to me, connect to the cards and cleanse the energy. Now, another thing you can actually do is knock the deck. Now, I know that sounds really simple or silly, but knocking your deck can actually cleanse the energy. So whatever way you like to cleanse your deck, totally up to you. I tend to do the sage route and yeah, let's take a look and shuffle some cards. Naturally, you've got to get used to how they feel in your hands, right? So let's do a little mini reading to see what you need to know. So if you chose this deck over the Green Witch Oracle, now I know we haven't seen that deck yet, this might be a message for you. Here we go, overthinking. How many of you are in overthinking mode right now? So let's do a little story about overthinking. You might be overthinking taking on a leadership role or making a move in your life. Now, masculine energy, I talk about this all the time in my videos, is for your personal growth and evolution. It's okay to take steps. Now, if you're chasing a relationship or you're overthinking a relationship, my advice would be not putting yourself in that kind of masculine energy. There is some disruption here right now in your energy. What's holding you back? What's got you overthinking? Success. You're worried about whether you can have it or not. And yes, you can. You're just worried about what happens when you have nothing to worry about. It's kind of that energy that says, I want the happiness. I want the success. But what do I do with it once I have it? What will I leave behind? What will other people think of me? And honestly, doesn't really matter. What matters is that you are happy, you feel abundant, and that you have unconditional love for yourself and others. Overall, I really do like this deck. It has a nice feel to it. I love the colors. It doesn't feel flimsy or cheaply made. Like it actually feels pretty solid. So for me, I really like this deck and I highly recommend it. Now let's go to the Green Witch Oracle and see if it stands up to this deck. Okay, so this is deck number two, the Green Witch Oracle. And as I mentioned earlier, it's much more neutral in color. So if you like the beige, the yellow, the white, the green, this might be more for you. So let's take a look inside the box and have a look at the guidebook. And it looks very similar to the other one. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put my hands on this book, give it a little bit of energy, and let's take a message and see what we need to know before we start. So I'm gonna open up to a random page and success. How interesting that that's what we talked about in the little mini reading for the Ask Your Guides deck. So we have peppermint here. One of the most delightful things about a garden is the anticipation it provides. Well, I always talk about gardening in my videos and I say, you can't go busting out the miracle grow. You have to let it grow naturally and in due time you will harvest. So the anticipation 
of success is what matters. The one thing that I would say about this guidebook versus the other one is that it's not laid out the same. And not every guidebook should be the same. This one doesn't have like a long paragraph or many paragraphs. It's actually simpler in format. So it's gonna tell you what card, there's the picture, and the meaning. It's gonna say cultivation and magical correspondences. So you're gonna get some keywords. So for success, we have prosperity, good luck, justice, we have Mercury assigned to it and astrological sign Libra. Very interesting. So Peppermint indicates rapid progress, a quick return or increase of positive energies. And if you are seeking an answer, it is loud and firm. Yes. We're getting quite the messages today. So I do like the way this book is set up. Let's take a look at the cards themselves. You can definitely feel the nature component of these cards. I mean, look at these carrots here. Carrots represent clarity. I love the connection between our eyes, seeing clearly, and carrots because we know that they're good for our eye health. Second card here is peas hmm, and communication. I'd like to know what peas have to do with communication. If you know, please let me know in the comments. I feel like this deck is making me want to read further or do some studying to see what the connections are to our foods. Desire, okay, lettuce and desire, that's a new one for me. And look at this, we have cucumbers. Now I love pickles. Anybody that knows me knows that I enjoy many varieties of pickles. I didn't know that they were related to emotion, but I guess now I do. Potatoes here are about grounding. Well, yes, they're an earth vegetable, so that definitely makes sense. Let's flip through a few more cards, have a look at the images. What do you feel when you see them? Do you connect to them? Now, I think we naturally will connect to cards that look like food because we have to eat. So naturally, they're gonna be foods that you like and that you don't like, but ultimately, I think these cards look quite real. The texture of the cards is really nice. It actually feels a little bit more smooth and glossy than the other deck, but overall, I would say that it has a really nice quality to the cards. And even the back of the cards, you know, the green, the earth vibe, it feels really nice and calming. So like the other deck, I'm gonna knock the energy just to give it a bit of a cleanse. I'm gonna shuffle and I'm gonna knock that deck again just to give it an extra bit of energy from me. So let's do a little mini reading with these cards to see what we need to know. And we have here divination. Well, this is a divination tool. So we're definitely feeling very spiritual right now. There is abundance coming our way. Funny how we talked about success, right? Abundance, success, we can manifest it. And one thing we should know is that we're divinely guided and protected. We don't have to worry about the who, what, when, where, why, and how, because we know that we're always gonna be taken care of. So tranquility here says, be calm, take things easy, no stress. We don't want anything to get in the way of our manifestations. And one of the best ways to do that is to have gratitude. What are you thankful for? What's one thing right now that you can say that you are thankful for in your daily life? Overall, I really do like this deck. It feels good in my hands, it's easy to shuffle, and I do like the fact that there's a bit of a bend to the cards. I don't like to feel like I'm hurting the cards or denting the cards when they feel really stiff. I don't know if you know what I mean by that, but I do like the fact that they have some give to them. Now, in the comments, please let me know your thoughts about this deck and of course the other deck that we just used. So my question to you is, did you prefer the Ask Your Guides deck or the Green Witch Oracle? or would you like to have both? As always, thank you so much for being here with me. I really do appreciate it. Thank you very much, and I look forward to seeing you in the next unboxing.